Okay. Good morning, everyone, and uh, all good evening wherever you are in the world. I'm uh, your co-host, Sarah Harkness. I am a co-founder and director here at Cattle Dog Digital. And um, thank you so much for joining us today. I'm super excited to dive into today's topic with Dean from Pendula. And just a few housekeeping items before we get started. Uh, the webinar will run for about 45 minutes, uh, if not less. And there'll be time at the end for Q&A, but feel free to pop a question in the chat window whenever you have a burning one. And um, we will definitely answer them. So look out for an email from us afterwards as well. And um, we'll be sending out the recording. So with that, let's get started. I'm super thrilled to introduce our very special guest and thank you for hosting us here in the Pendula office. This is amazing. I feel like I'm a, a newsreader at the best. <laughs> um, <laughs> so Dean is the head of uh, business development here at Pendula and has worked for over 15 years in B2B and B2C. And we are super, super excited to hear from him today and get his insights about how mobile and SMS and communications can transform marketing automation. So with that, I'm going to hand the ball over to you, Dean. Excellent. Thanks, Sarah. Um, so first, thank you to everyone for joining. Uh, we know that you're all very, very busy. And so obviously your time is valuable. So my goal for everyone here this morning is to provide you with some value. So hopefully you get some information that you know, you're able to take back to your own businesses and hopefully be entertained um, uh, you know, otherwise. So grab a coffee, sit back, and we'll go through um, some information that we've put together and hopefully that you get some value out of that. So let's, um, let's set the scene. It is December, 1992. There is a technician, there's a guy here called Neil Papworth, and he is sitting at his desk and he's got a whole bunch of um, other technicians sitting around him, a couple of guys in suits, and he's there in front of his computer and he sends the first message. And that message is Merry Christmas. On the other side, the recipient, there's a, there's a gentleman called uh, Richard Jarvis. Now he's actually downtown at a party in a posh hotel and he receives this message. And uh, so Neil sends this message. And it's interesting, this, this is a really interesting time because um, this was a period where the major telcos, there was a bit of a race. And what they were trying to achieve was they were trying to actually develop a short messaging system, uh, service, so SMS as we know it today. Why were they doing that? They were doing that because what they were trying to achieve was pages back in the day to actually communicate between, uh, you know, back and forth and whatnot. So Vodafone came out with that in 1992. Um, as a result of that, Neil became a bit of a celebrity. So he was then flown around all around the world. So he went to Singapore, Sydney, um, you know, parts of America, and then um, obviously installing and, and getting these, um, this SMS service um, up and running for, for Vodafone. Um, yeah, so that's, that's, that's kind of the history. This particular screen grab, um, if, you, if you search the internet, is a short ad that the Super Bowl put together a number of years ago. And it's got a whole bunch of different people that have developed certain applications on mobile technology. And uh, this is a screen grab where he says, I'm Neil, I created SMS. So check that out. It's, 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 quite, it's, quite, uh, it's quite a funny little ad. Um, back home in Australia, we didn't get SMS until 1994. And that's when Telstra um, had enabled that service. Uh, coincidentally, it was broadcast only. So you could only receive messages. You couldn't, you couldn't respond. Um, but it was the first step in enabling that service here in Australia. And 1995, that's when we saw the other networks um, allowing that to, to be used. And so people within uh, those different carriers, so if you're a Vodafone customer, if you're a Telstra customer, or if you're an Optus customer, you could send messages back and forth, but you could only send within the networks. And I... I'm starting to show my vintage here a little bit, but I don't know if you recall, it was kind of frustrating back in the uni days. It's like, if you weren't on the same network, yeah. you couldn't receive it. Like, oh, screwed. why aren't you on Telstra? Why aren't you on <laughs> Vodafone? It. Remember? It's kind of a qualifier. Right. So <laughs> it was pretty funny. So, but statistically, it's, it's really interesting. So when that took place, um, the advent of enabling, you know, inter-carrier messaging didn't take place until the year 2000. Olympic Games took place, so that was quite timely. Um, and then numbers uh, from a usage perspective, all the way from you know 2002 to 2012, uh, it you know it grew by 12, 12 times. So one million messages in 2002, 
all the way up to 2012, uh, over 12 million. More recently, um, stats are showing that, you know, as back as 2017, uh, Australians send 85 million messages a day. Not surprised. My four-year-old can SMS now. There you go. <laughs> yeah. So if there are any people out there that say, you know, SMS and all technology is not being used, I'd challenge that. And globally, uh, it's 22 billion a day. So wow. it's, it's, it's massive and it's ubiquitous. It's everywhere. So what does that mean? You know, what does that mean for your customers? What are they doing? Um, what, how are they using SMS? And so uh, some research here, some more recent research here, uh, Australians on average spend about three hours on their phone. And I think with, you know, the recent events of the pandemic, we've probably spent a little bit more than that. Yeah. Um, streaming services, you know, we consume content. So I would say that's a very conservative number, mm. um, but three hours a day is what the research is suggesting. And of that, 98% of messages that are sent are actually opened and, and read. That's pretty high. So take that one step further. Of that 98%, um, 11% of those, if there is a click, so if there's a web link going somewhere, people will actually click. Mm. And of that, if there's a call to action, you want them to do something, you want them to send, you know, uh, fill their credit card details or, or pay something or whatever, 35% um, will actually respond. So these numbers are pretty impressive. And I think if, you know, any marketer or agency out there, they'd be kind of, you know, salivating about these sort of numbers if they were coming back to their customers saying, hey, we could do this for you. So they're the numbers. And what we're seeing is that every generation now is moving towards a preference towards message, you know, messaging. You know, who doesn't? It's simple. It's, it's fast. It's quick. Um, we carry our phones. I don't know about you guys, but when I leave and I leave my phone at home, I, I stress out. So, oh, yeah, it's like missing an arm. Yeah. yeah. So, so the question then is, why aren't more businesses doing this? You know, why aren't more businesses actually doing this? And I, you know, I'll sort of ask, I'll throw it out there to the audience. You know, are you guys doing this? And, and what are the challenges? And in order to sort of really answer that, you've got to look at, I guess, the history. And so here, you know, we've got a slide of, uh, you know, the various generations. So we talked about generation one. That's when we're sending out broadcast messages going out. Um, can't respond. So, you know, that's, there's a lot of businesses actually doing that now. If you think about courier services, you know, when they uh, send a message, it's like, Sarah, will you be home? One, two, or, you know, yep. that, that's kind of it. You don't, in some cases, you're not able to actually respond. If we take that a step further, what we're seeing now, generation two is that really simplistic, you know, respond one, two, yes, no, that type of thing. Um, it's very linear. Um, you know, there's there's no sort of track for, you know, exception handling, you know, so it's, it's quite, you know, it's in a sense, it's good, but it's also a little bit frustrating. It's an obvious bot. It is. Yeah. It is. Um, and so, you know, the holy grail really is how do you take that capability mm. and then humanize that? Mm. How do you send a message, pause, get a response, and then take action? You know, because when you're having a conversation with somebody, um, you know, when I'm talking to you, Sarah, it's about, hey, Sarah, do you want to go out tomorrow for lunch? Mm. I don't go, do you want to go out for lunch tomorrow? Blah, 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 blah. One, two or three. One, two or three. <laughs> it's, it's a case of just how do we humanize that experience? And I think what's really important here is not even just about the interaction piece. It's more about actually how do you execute on what you say you're going to do? And I think that's really, really important. It's really, it's the missing link. Mm. So taking where we've come, humanizing that, and then executing on that, you know, creating some automation and delivering on that. So that's really, really hard. So why aren't more businesses doing that? A, it's really hard. It's really, really hard. You're in the services game. You see the challenges that businesses have with, you know, how difficult it is, you know, multiple systems, et cetera. Um, we have spotted an opportunity in that. And so, you know, the reason that we're here talking about this is, you know, some of the challenges that businesses have. And, you know, at Pendula, what we do is we take all that difficulty, we take all that complexity and we allow people to, businesses to actually automate that process really simply, connect into your CRM, um, drag and drop, you know, and then create that journey and create the automation. Um, we talked about some, 
you know, the exception handling, you know, what happens when things sort of fall out? If you don't answer one, two or three, mm. what do you do? Mm. You know, that in some cases, it just gets lost in the ether and then it's, you, you know. never get a response. Never get a response. Pretty Very frustrating. And then what happens? You jump on the phone, you speak to customer service, let me look at your record. Sorry, we don't have a record of that, Sarah. And, you know, some poor person somewhere in another part of the world that's been offshore to take customer service is just getting grilled. Um, so we've taken that complexity out and, you know, we've developed a solution that enables businesses to have that. Um, but enough about us, you know, let's talk about some of the businesses that are actually having free flowing conversational text messaging out. So in the telco space, um, don't know if you guys know, but there's a company called Amazium. They recently acquired by Optus. Um, and they were looking at a way of how do they improve their interaction? How do they improve their interaction with customers, doing it in a very efficient way, um, allowing customers to, to go back and forth very rapidly? And if you think about it, a telco, um, that's, that's, their, that's their business. That's, that's their, their game. game. You know? yeah. And again, taking that to the next level where they're actually able to execute on some of those things. So you know, they've got a number of different use cases they use. So things like onboarding, um, cross-sell, upsell. So things like, you know, if your data plan, you're coming to the, you know, the, the end of your data or using it close, you know, would you like to upgrade? Things like that. Um, things like retention, renewals. Um, antidotally, they do a, a number of surveys. They collect information out. They keep it nice and simple. And that information has all come back. And again, keeping it via text so that they're getting it back and forth. And it's really easy and accessible for their customers. Um, if you think about the size of their business, you know, they've got something like, you know, under, you know, the 1.2, Two million customers. Um, that's a lot. That's a lot of interactions. You know, um, to be able to automate that, to be able to have that, you know, all the customers go through that experience. It's really, really. It's going to cost a lot of money. Um, you know, in the absence of automation. Absolutely. And so, engagement numbers went up by thirty-two percent. What's an engagement um, number? It's basically having a response. It's basically having somebody come back. I don't know if you guys have ever felt this, but you know, you send out a message. Uh, to someone waiting, waiting. and you get nothing <laughs> silence dot dot Donuts. dot you know um, so they were able to see a massive uh, increase in their engagement which was which is something that again marketers um, agencies you know they salivate over these kind of Absolutely. these numbers these are very impressive numbers um, and then from a conversion perspective things like the upsell the cross sell the onboard and getting new customers on board you know they were seeing figures around about 15% and upwards as far as you know those conversions so again really impressive numbers uh, just by using conversational messaging having different flows having context around what the message was actually being sent and for those that are uh, that are aware amazium was recently uh, bought out by optus so these guys had been around for a little while, but they were a disruptor, uh, really challenging the market. And Optus obviously saw that as an opportunity to take some market share. So when you're doing good things, it gets noticed. Uh, moving on, um, this, is, this is a really interesting use case, um, a really interesting customer of us, because I'm going to be honest, and I don't want anyone to take offense, but it's really hard to get emotionally attached to a utility provider. It's really hard. You know, I don't get excited when I get my, my gas or electricity bill. Oh, no. <laughs> you know? Definitely not. If you think it, it's 100% important and it's something that we all need. It, you know, you need power and whatnot. But at the same time, um, it's, it's not a product that people get behind and, and, and form an emotional attachment mm -hmm. to. So Origin recognized this and what they were looking to do was, you know, how do they actually change uh, and drive closer relationships with their customer base. Mm -hmm. And if anyone knows, or I'm sure that we've all gone through this, but you know, in the utility and the energy space, it's highly competitive. It's almost a race to the bottom of the pit. You know, discounts. You know, hey, we'll lock in your price for you know an extra 15% off if you do this and whatnot. And there's no emotional attachment. It's a price-driven game. It's a game that you know is that industry is, is vitally important, but at the same time, it's, it's, the margins are really, really thin because of that high level of competitiveness. So how do you differentiate? And what, how they differentiate was, how do they get closer to their customers? You'll see here, there's a number of different use cases. So, you know, marketing, customer onboarding, all that type of stuff. But things like, you know, uh, installation, you know, being able to converse with their customers, say, hey, we're going to be here at this time. Will you be there? Mm. You know, I don't know if you guys know, but when you get that... Um, when you get uh, you know those those confirmations, hey, will you be there between like nine and 
seven o'clock at night. Mm. Nice. It's it's a pretty Maybe. it's a pretty big window, okay. you know. You want to be able to know that you can sort of come back and say, "Hey, I'm not going to be there. Can I reschedule and things like that?" So that's that's really important. And again, that's just customer experience. That helps with you know, hey, these guys are listening. It's easy to do business with them. Yeah, you know, when I pay the bill, the lights come on. Um, and so that's that's one particular area. Um, another one is demand response. And so for those in the know, um, you know, there are times where there are peak periods. And again. Generally what happens in the market is everybody is opted into these events. And what it is, is the ability to actually say, hey, can we control your usage or can you maintain your usage at a certain level? And if you do, we'll give you an incentive. Mm -hmm. Now that sounds really good on, you know, at face value, but when everybody is opted in and everybody is given that opportunity, there's no value in it. You know, hey, Sarah, I'm gonna give you a 5% discount because you're just a customer, mm -hmm. great. Who cares? You know, um, when when you get fed up, you go to the next provider and say, "Hey, I was getting five percent off anyway." But when there is that interaction and you're buying into doing these activities, and then you're rewarded, that's different. That's that's communication. There's a bit of value transfer there, and then you can actually see what's actually taking place. So that's that's you know one of the many different um, use cases that uh, that Origin have used, and and I think you know that's fantastic for a company that. You know, it's not an exciting product, but it's a very important product. So, um, yeah. So, which kind of leads into uh, the last, uh, the last use case, and I think this is an amazing. This is a really great quote. Um, you know, Brad from Bizcover has said, you know, uh, we needed to be wowing our customers. Mm. Um, talking about products that aren't, um, you know, hard to get sort of a little bit of you know passion behind. For those that don't know, BizCover are a, a, an insurance company. They provide insurance products to um, you know, small to medium businesses. And I'm a little bit close to this because I used to be in the insurance game. Insurance is a grudge buy. No one wants to buy insurance. Um, you, know, you never know how good it is until you actually need to claim. Mm -hmm. So when you think about this narrative, what they're trying to do, they're trying to wow their customers because again, it's something that everybody needs. Um, especially if you're a small business owner, you know, whether you've got commercial insurance, PI, you know, whatever, current, whatever, um, it's all important. You, you, you pay for it, but then you don't get the value until you hit sort of disaster, mm. you know? Um, so how do you change that? How do you change that so that the customer feels like they're being valued? How do you change that? And so you have to deliver an exceptional customer service. And again, if we look at the price for, if you go down the barrel, you're just going from, you know, you'll end up just going from one insurer to the next insurer to the next insurer to the next insurer. So I think here, this is really, really exciting that, you know, um, you've got somebody here that looks after obviously, you know, their, their IT and their infrastructure and, you know, was looking for a, you know, a customer centric driven initi initiative to try and change things. Um, what do they use? Um, you know, conversational messaging for. Again, uh, there's, there's pre-qualification. So obviously you've got people that are looking for quotes and they go on the website and whatnot. So, you know, wh when that information comes in, sometimes you just get what you want. You go to the next website and let's let's be honest. We all sort of do that. I, I have done that in the past, um, but you do that. And so what that means to that business or biz cover is that they've got an abandoned cart. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you want to follow up and you want to speak to this customer, but they may not want to speak to you. And so they've identified that, you know, calls are valuable. However, people want to be able to respond very quickly, very discreetly. Maybe they want to come back to it. So they use uh, the SMS functionality to be able to have those conversations. And guess what? When you're sending SMSs back and forth, you're actually having a conversation. And when you're having a conversation, you're building a relationship. Yeah. Um, on top of that, there's, there's a number of other ways that they use it. So things like, you know, helping with claims notifications, um, things like billing, retention. So all the nasty things that you don't like doing. So things like billing, for example, you know, when people go into arrears and, you know, we've all had periods where, you know, our direct debit doesn't go through and then you get the phone call and some, you know, a customer service person like, hey, you know, and they're being nice and they're doing their job. But you're like, oh, I'll sort it. Just yeah. leave me alone. Yeah. You know, it's. You know, they, they don't want to be doing that sort of stuff. And so, again, they use the conversational element to, you know, the, the messaging to, to be able to automate some of these processes, which are a tedious, unpleasant, um, and so that they can actually focus on, you know, more important things that customers actually value. So things like claims, 
notifications, but obviously, you know, that's high touch and you want people to actually talk about. Um, so moving on, we've talked about three businesses, relatively large to sort of medium size, but, you know, there are a plethora of organizations that are actually using, um, you know, conversational messaging and, and the personalization aspect of that. Um, this is, this slide here shows uh, some customers that we serve, um, some really, really interesting ones here um, from a non-for-profit space. Uh, we've got um, uh, Wildlife Victoria. They use messaging to uh, help with the notification of injured animals. So you can actually text in, they'll have a conversation that way. And they obviously then mobilize their resources so that, you know, um, you know, that animal is looked after and whatnot. Because again, jumping on a call center, hey, you know, I hit a bird, I'm on the side of the road, I feel really bad, you know, and you might be waiting there for a while. But so they've got that functionality. Um, in the not-for-profit space, it's also interesting that, you know, that we've got organizations that are looking to um, use that SMS capability to increase donor uh, support. So things like, you know, hey, Sarah, um, you supported us, you know, last month for $25. We'd really appreciate it if you get to 30, mm -hmm. you know. Um, there's a couple of uh, organizations that I support. And what's interesting is, um, you know, you get the phone call, mm -hmm. you don't know who it is. And that person does that pitch oh, really man. fast. Yes. <laughs> and they do it really quick. Yeah. yeah. They got to get it off, you yeah. know, hey, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a really tough game. Uh, there's, there's a lot of good causes that are being served out there. Yep. But the reality is that people are busy. These people that are employed to actually make these phone calls to get these donations uh, for the events that they're having um, feel that they need to get that off really, really quickly. And then, you know, get, in, you know, get the customer to buy in emotionally and they go, oh, yes, I, I will. But the truth is most people say, no, oh, hey, I'm sorry, I'm busy. Can you call me back later? And never to be heard of again. And the poor person in that call center is great next, you know. So automating some of this is what some of the non-for-profits um, in our space are using to, to help with that. Um, you'll notice that we've got TEDx there, uh, you know, events that we all know and love. Um, they use uh, the messaging component to, to mobilize their staff and actually manage that. So, um, you know, once we have events again, big events, um, you know, at the ICC, they've got large, fast numbers of people that, you know, they need to manage and corral and whatnot. So they use that. And then we've got some healthcare businesses. We've got Ramsey there that uses for appointment reminders. And in that space, we've got a large number of uh, uh, customers that we serve in the NDIS space. So things like appointment check-ins, reminders, surveys, all that sort of stuff. And that's really important because you know, people that are receiving these services want to be able to enact very quickly. They will likely have their phone with them. They don't want to go into email, you know, yes, no, that sort of thing, have conversations. And if there's anything that's outside of that, it's captured, you know, somebody in the customer service center can actually give them a call and have that conversation around that. And we talked about obviously uh, origin um, and some telcos. So, so they're some of the customers that are actually doing you know, what we're talking about and, and deriving real value and um, getting real customer engagement, you know, which is really difficult in this day and age because there are so many tools out there and there's so many different apps and, and, and you see that you're yes. making recommendations all the time. Absolutely. Um, but what are some of the benefits? So as a, as a product um, manufacturer and, and as, as we serve customers, we've sent something like over 18 million messages we start to see some trends. We start to see some, um, some trends as far as how people are using it and what the engagement figures look like. Um, so things like, you know, 30% interaction rates. Again, interaction is having that conversation going back and forth, you know, the ability to say, hey, are you interested in this area? No, come back, you know. Um, and if not, free flow, mm. if you want to send some feedback. So mm. we start to see that. Um, this 17% additional feedback is really, really interesting. So, you know, I don't know if anyone's ever done a survey and, you know, being sarcastic there, I'm sure everyone has, but surveys are really blunt. You know, they sort of go down this particular path. Yes, no, one to 10. One to 10, you know, and then you fill it out five different times, you know, with the different pages and whatnot. And then right at the end, you get a little box and it says, is there anything else you'd like to add? And then you can be really honest. And you can be, exactly. So what we found is that through, you know, conversational SMS and, and the personalization is that sometimes we've had customers come back with unsolicited feedback. So in some cases where we've had customers actually go out and do a retention campaign, things like, you know, hey, 
you're a customer or you're about the end of your contract, would you like to renew? Would you like to, you know, stay on board and we'll give you an extra discount? Or we've noticed that your usage has gone down. We've had cases where customers have actually come back and said, no, but if you give me this, I will. And that is really valuable. I mean, that's, you know, like marketers and research companies, you know, they, this, this stuff is gold. If you can get this information and then understand what a particular cohort or a particular segment of, you know, your custom base looks like, you start to understand what is it they want? Why do they want this? And is this a trend? And is this something that we need to actually, you know, put out in the market because this is what they're saying, you know, rather than the poor marketing team having to then Guess go or out. Yeah. Make assumptions exactly. that are not data driven. That's right. Um, and then finally, you know, the, the upsell, the cross sell. So, you know, your existing customer base, you know, when uh, we've seen, you know, 15% and upwards, um, that's twice, you know, the response rate from, from email. Um, and again, email is a great tool, but at, at, at times it's a little bit overused and at times there's quite a lot of information. Again, we're all busy. We don't have time to be sorting through you know, like pages and pages of stuff and then documents and whatnot. We want to be able to provide value and execute on offers and things that we want to right there. You know, meet your customer where you send the message and then provision what that actually looks like. Mm. So this is uh, just before I sort of close up, um, this is a piece of research that uh, we we used uh, a little while ago. Um, it's, it's by Walker, um, a consulting company. Um, it's a little bit dated now, but I think this really rings true to, to today, you know? Um, you know, if you if you're not if you're not if your customers aren't talking to you, they're probably talking to somebody else. I think it's pretty valid. You know, you'd probably see that for your interactions with, with businesses and Absolutely. whatnot. Absolutely, and they often don't even know. So I think uncovering that it's even more critical. Exactly. Um, you kind of it's it's personalization will die. I think that's right. It, it's it's interesting that when you don't talk to a friend for a long time and then all of a sudden they've either moved on or they don't like you or they're you know whatever. Um, you know it's it's the same with customers when customers are not talking to you or that you know they're just paying their bill or whatever and that's that's all they're doing. You know you you kind of want to know where they're at and then all of a sudden you get the cancellation and then you know they're with another provider or they're with another service provider and so again you know I think. Um, in lieu of uh, automation efficiency and things like that, um, you know, experience is paramount. Um, Especially now, post the, the pandemic, I mean, yeah. time in the world, exactly. I think um, people want authentic customer experience. That's right. As well, so That's that right. change in or shift in one, two, three response, and actually, I'm a person. I've got a personal response to give you. Yeah. I think that becomes even more critical. And I think also the other thing is that um, we want to be able to, and when I say we consumers, um, we want to be able to interact when it's relevant and comfortable for us, not between the nine to five hours and things like that. So, um, you know, I've got examples, uh, you know, where I actually like chatting with people online when I'm actually, you know, got a bill inquiry or something like that. But the problem is some services only operate between certain times. But with the messaging, what you can do is you can actually create some automation around that. So if I do respond to something and then I don't respond for a while, the chat's not going to be closed. I can come back and respond to that tomorrow, the next day. And then, you know, we sort of keep that conversation going. So there's some automation, some smarts behind that. Mm. Um, but in saying that, I, there is relevance with, you know, having chats with a real person on the other end, but it's frustrating when you can only do it during work hours when we're all working. You know, like that's pretty tough. Um, so just before I hand over, I've done a lot of talking and I hope you've had some value. Um, we, we here, we've partnered up with, uh, with Catalog and we would love to offer an exclusive one month trial because obviously we've talked about all this great stuff. And I think one of the challenges is like, yeah, that's great. That's what they're doing. But how? How, how do we do this? Can, yes. you know, like show us, mm. show us. And I think in this day and age of technology, um, value has to be derived very, very quickly. People want to see it. You want to mitigate as much risk as possible. Um, we've talked about, you know, a number of different, you know, organizations of different sizes that have actually used, you know, conversational messaging and personalization. So just want to open this up to everyone that's registered and attended. Um, 
there are terms and conditions and we'll send some information out, but a one month trial um, to actually use this um, in your own business um, or just test it, get a feel for it and see how easy it is. Um, we'll, we'll set up a call just to you know, help configure that up. Um, but that's, that's available there and we'll send more information over. And I think with that, I am going to hand back over to you, Sarah. Perfect. So look, um, we've got a couple of questions, Dean. So I might just ask uh, if that's all right. And any questions, please pop them through on the chat window. So first question is um, from Anonymous, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, which is not very personalised. No, it's not. But what do you find more effective with marketing messages, plain text, SMS or MMS? So that's obviously talking about... Yeah the type yeah yeah um that's that's a really good question and uh, that's a pretty common question especially when we talk to to organizations that like they want to optimize you know what channel they want to use i think it's a combination you know i i don't think there's a silver bullet i you know there are cases where you will need to send an image and things like that but in saying that if you've got a bill inquiry and you want to dispute that you wouldn't upload a pdf and then send it back you know you would have a conversation and so there are things so we speak to we speak to um you know some partners out there and they do stuff in the you know the property management game mm. and it's really important for them to be able to have you know mms messages going back and forth but for i, I would say the majority of the time depending upon the specific use case and, and and what you're trying to drive with that communication exactly you know it's so it's where you're at and the context that's right as to what the right that's message right. is really and what the right thing is to say part of what we want to do is map that out and understand what is a typical conversation are there different conversations that we're having with hmm. different groups of people and it's not necessarily just about automation but that's a huge part that's of right. that when you can't do that at scale you can't have a one-to-one -one conversation when you call centers only a thousand people for example that's right so um, that's a great yeah, that's answer. A good... Thank you, Dean. Um, so are we, are we finding younger users engaging with SMS or prefer other messaging systems like WhatsApp? Isn't that, that's a really interesting question. Um, so every generation is, is uh, you know, as I mentioned in, in the earlier slides, is moving towards a messaging-based preference. Um, the challenge with, I think, you know, some of these apps um, you would have seen some security issues with, you know, uh, WhatsApp being owned by, you know, um, Facebook and obviously how they want to market and collect information and things like that. So is there a preference? I think there's a big challenge for businesses because uh, twofold, A, you've got to get customers on board into an app. Mm -hmm. B, once they're in the app, how often are they going to use it? So if you think about that, there are real challenges around, again, getting engagement. So, you know, we saw with uh, with WhatsApp, um, you know, when these sort of privacy concerns came out about, you know, collecting more data for businesses, et cetera, you know, a couple of months ago, you know, things like Telegram and Signal mm -hmm. came out. Mm -hmm. You know, I've got a whole bunch of people just adding, you know, they're, they're downloading it. But I'll be honest, I've not sent one Signal message or one Telegram message at all. Mm -hmm. um, I rarely use WhatsApp. It's, you know, one or two people. And that's just because they're overseas and it's easier to yeah, communicate. That's However, right. that you know, there's obviously multiple channels in which to reach people mm. on different levels. I think that this is um, that I think to your point before about just reaching people in the right place at the right time. Um, whilst there's trends kind of moving away from say WhatsApp and Messenger mm -hmm. to more SMS and you know other tools. I still think that um, younger users are using what their friends use, right? So Absolutely. And I think if you think about it, um, you know, the big data challenge for telcos is that, you know, they used to charge for X amount of SMS and phone calls, you know, in the old bills, you know, hey, you can do this many calls at this time and this many international and this many, you know, domestic and so many SMSs. And if you got more, you'd get this like massive bill with all these like, you know. Oh, yeah. But what's happened now is that SMS is ubiquitous. You know, the moment you buy uh, a sim card you know it's it's part of the plan you're not charged it's like you can send as many sms as you want and the truth is that when you're overseas you know you may not have access to wi-fi things like that but if you do have a card or a sim that's actually enabled within that country you can send sms and in some cases you know there, there are, have been stories where sms has been used for you know rescue and things Absolutely. like that yeah I'm so 
I was in um, New Orleans a few years ago mm -hmm. and there was um, a huge flood that was going on at the time. And that was the way that they communicated That's right. the, that, you know, you need to probably get to save ground, yeah. <laughs> basically. I, I guess, uh, you know, just sort of tying up that question, um, I, I would say buyer beware of the shiny new thing around apps and different sort of channels and things like that. Because, mm -hmm. you know, those figures that we talked about earlier, you know, there's, um, you know, back in 2017, the research had said that it was 85 million messages a day. I would say that it's, you know, we're probably looking at around about a million Absolutely. now. So SMS is still heavily used. So, And so um, Bryn Chadwick has asked us, where is the customer data hosted or stored? And I think there's probably two parts to that <laughs> answer. So I'll let you um, answer the first part. That is a really technical question. So thank you, Bryn. <laughs> um, so currently as it stands, we are... Our solution, where the where I guess with the messenger, mm. so the message is always you know the data is actually stored back within the customer's environment. So from a from a Salesforce for example, for Salesforce. So if you're a Salesforce customer, um, we enable to we enable you know businesses to access that information for their customers, and we're just the message. So we're the carrier. We're the carrier bird. You know mm. we get the message and we deliver it, and then once we get the response, we deliver it back. We don't store it. It's stored back within um, their Salesforce environment. So, from a safety concern, you know, we don't we don't capture any of that information. So, you know, and we've we've had, you know, talking about some of these larger companies, you know, we've we've gone through that that rigor to make sure that you know all that information is safe and secure, mm -hmm. and um, you know, there's we minimize as much risk as possible. Absolutely. But good question. Thank a you, Brent. Fabulous question. Um, Ying has asked us. How do you track and report on the red and open rate for the text messages? And I think this comes back to what we do here at Cuddle Dog mm -hmm. and um, without giving too much of a plug, but ultimately we want to help bring that data to life in Salesforce. Correct. But we also use your product to bring that data and information to life based on that. Yeah. So, you know, when you invest in um, CRMs and, you know, significant infrastructure, you want it to be able to give you dashboards and, and, and have visibility because you want to be able to track things. And, you know, there's a famous quote, you know, what isn't measured doesn't get done. So you want to see what that looks like. And, you know, so for our Salesforce customers, you can build out dashboards and you can see, you can see, you know, the responses and things like that. But we also have a, a an analytics or a visualization layer within the tool. So you can, you can access that information and you can see it. So it's there, you can see it um, and you can manage it. So yeah, thanks, Yin. Uh, that's a good question. Great question. And um, in terms of how long does it take to get something like Pendular Live, Dean? Great question. <laughs> so... The short of it really is, 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 you know, we could get it up and running within, you know, 15 to 30 minutes, realistically, like connecting it in or whatnot. And I think that, you know, in this modern age, time is, time is you know, time is valuable, you know, um, time is money. So it's a case of deriving value very, very quickly. And for those that have been around, you know, the old days of, you know, hey, we're going to do this project and it's going to cost you a million dollars and it'll take us five years to get there. And by the time you get there, it's like the world's changed mm -hmm. and you're now in catch up mode. That's, that's no longer acceptable for businesses. That's absolutely unacceptable. Absolutely. You know, people have built careers around that, but no more. It's not what we're in business. So for. we're able to stand up an environment, connecting to data very, very rapidly. Um, we've had businesses do this, you know, over a weekend and then just you know, send messages out and, you know, um, there's a particular wine business that we're quite fond of and they sent messages out. Uh, they'd never done this before, <laughs> never done this before. Um, and they were getting orders back. You know, they sent, Hey, we've got this offer, you know um, and, you know, because they were new to the technology, um, they were kind of expecting one, two, and three, you know, they'll, you know, you kind of. No, I think they had know? something like 30% uplift. On they, exactly. Sales. That's yeah. right. And they had people coming back because they've got long-term customers that have come back and they buy the same wine over the last 20, 30 years. And, and they came back and said, Hey, I'd like a bottle of this. And, and you know, so, and that customer was just like, we've never had this data before. Mm. They were kind of shocked. So you could get it done really, really quickly. And I guess the challenge is um, it, it goes back to what is the complexity? What is the complexity yeah. that you're looking yeah. Um but generally speaking, we can get up within 15 to 30 minutes. And I think starting small too is always a Absolutely. good opportunity to um, pilot. And that's why having a month to, to play is going to be Absolutely. fantastic. Absolutely. We want you to come in.
have a play, try and break it. Um, just joking. Um, don't break it. Um, but yeah, it's available. So. Uh, so we still have some more questions. If wow. we're talking about upselling and asking people to increase their donations, for example, in the nonprofit space, mm -hmm. um, what's the percentage of typical drop off or unsubscribes on SMS or that people that are cranky or angry that they've been asked to increase via that channel? Because it is a very personal channel. Yeah. Someone sends me a text. Generally, like, I'm going to respond. So. That's, that's a really good question. Um, I think this question here isn't so, um, I, I wouldn't isolate it just to the non-for-profit and the donation space. I think it's, I think it's, fairly, um, it, it's fairly broad. And so when you're asking somebody to do something more of what they're currently doing, it, it, it can be perceived, I think, you know, you, you can be frustrated. I think the reality is here is, and I'll get to the percentage piece, is that when you've got a customer base that have been regularly doing something, you know, out of the goodness of their heart because they want to support a cause, you've got to think about it. You know, they're willing to do it again. Um, and if they've got a period of time, it's just how do you enable that experience to be just a lot easier? And really authentic. And I authentic. That, that conversational you know, piece. That's not, right. You're not just flat out asking them for money. You're, you're, you're kind of leading them down a pathway that ultimately does increase the donation. Like, we really appreciate this. Give them some statistics about where their money's going. Mm. You know, the things that are important to donors, that they really want to feel like they are making a difference. It's a case of just understanding where they're at and then just being, I think, you know, respectful and politeful. I mean, you wouldn't send an SMS, you know, with a, you know, that's like four pages like, hey, you know, the people in blah, blah, blah need this and this is the, you know, it's that there are other, there are other mediums for that. And, you know, obviously email is where you send, you know, the, the chunk of the, the information. Um, as far as the drop off rate, look, that kind of varies. And, you know, I'd, I'd love to sort of say, hey, it's 5% or it's 10%. But the reality is, is that different customer segmentations are going to have different sort of response rates. Um, those customers that uh, donate on a fairly regular basis, you know, if they're asked, and again, I would say that it's a case of just incremental increases. You know, you don't go from, hey, you've donated $25 in the last campaign that we had. Can we ask for 1000 Yeah. You know, that's kind of, yeah, you know, I'd love to support it. That's a little bit high, you know, but it's a case of then saying, you know, we'd love that, you know, could we ask for an extra 15 like $40 for this month? One, two, three, yes or no. At least that way you're getting that engagement and then you start to collect what that particular uh, you know, demographic, what they're telling you. So I think it's a little bit different. Um, I'd love to share specifics, but, you know, obviously we respect um, our customer data, so we can't share everything. So. Uh, so another question then, how much SMS is too much SMS? <laughs> Can you ever exhaust, <laughs> over exhaust your customers? And what's the <clears throat> threshold? I mean, I, I mean, I think probably if I was to get that's a, that's a great SMSs question. That's a great day, question. But, yeah, that's a great question. So you've noticed some trends or have some data. <clears throat> um, I don't know if you've got friends on Facebook, but you know when they just keep blasting you with offers and things like that, and that's all I ever do? That's annoying. Mm. You know, hey, Sarah, you know, can you check out this? this? is great. Hey, can you like my page? Can you do, you know, it's the same thing. It's a medium. So I can't give, you know, there aren't specific, say, hey, you can only send two messages, you know, but I would say the way in which it's done, and again, this pointing back to, you know, humanizing that experience, how do you take a message, send it, pause, dot, 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 they then respond, and then you respond again. And then you have this flowing conversation, not like, hey, sir, bang, response, bang, response, bang, response. It's, you know, and at the same time, you don't want to be bombarding people. So I think, you know, at relevant times, um, everyone here knows their business really well everyone would know what their customers are like and i would say think about how you receive information how do you want to receive do you want to receive you know the terms and conditions of your product via an sms i would say no would you prefer that in a pdf in an email absolutely mm -hmm. but letting somebody know that hey this is coming um just check your email if you haven't let us know by saying no on the sms and then the email goes out and they say yes you know so there's there's some etiquette behind that. And, there's, and you know, I would say just some common sense. Absolutely. I like to call it empathetic marketing. Empathetic, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, okay, so a couple more questions and, and then we'll have to wrap up. Obviously. Okay. I would love to sit here and talk about these. Are, these day. are good this questions. Awesome. These are great questions. So with automated solutions, what happens if you get a response that makes no sense, that doesn't fit uh, the criteria of your 
Yeah. <laughs> so um, we've uh, we've collected many of those here in our organization. Um, you know, some of them not so pleasant. We can't sort of say openly here. Um, but again, the way that we've designed the tool is that, again, anything outside of, let's say, uh, you know, I would say baked responses, you know, there's a, there's a happy path and a sad path on, on what we're looking for. Um, you, that all gets captured within, and I don't want to get too technical here, because uh, I'm not a technical person, but we have the ability to capture anything that's outside of that particular path. And that information is captured back in the contact record. And create a case and exactly. alert, alert. So that's where the power of having this all tied back into your into your CRM. Management Absolutely, really so, ha happens. So. And then that's when you get you know somebody you know so Dean from Angela calls. Hey, you sent this message and you didn't seem too happy about that. You know how can we help? And and you've you've got you've got the you've got the history, so you can see what's been sent and then why they responded in such a way. And I think that's really important. Absolutely. And and for me, when we're talking you know, customer 360 or the, the, the one single view of a customer, mm -hmm. which is, you know, the nirvana for anyone mm -hmm. that even invests any money at all in any CRM. I think um, having the capability within and within the tool itself. Is yeah, so absolutely. Um, so question, do you only deal with sending and receiving messages? And this one I might need to answer too, but, um, or recommendations around the content or the copy? Yeah, good question. Um, so we're a we're a solution provider. We're not an agency. Um, so this is where we start to lean on, you know, um, experts like Cattledog. Um, so we wouldn't necessarily produce the content. Um, we would probably give you some advice. So again, if I go back to some other customers that we've had, you know, we would we would suggest, hey, maybe tone it back a little bit. Let's not have seven pages of you know, an offer. 130 characters, yeah. mate. Yeah, let's, yeah. let's, you know, the whole, you, you got to think about it. SMS is short message yes. service. It's, yeah. you know, so again, leaning, you know, we would lean um, on, you know, uh, experts like Catalog to say, hey, this is what they want to do. And then you guys would obviously, you know, give advice around what the campaign looks like, some of the messaging, some of the content, that sort of stuff. And, and from a cattle dog perspective, the customer journey, that full customer journey is what we really care about. That's so, right. You know, from beginning to end. And I think that this, your platform, Pendula, enables customers and our customers to, from a service and sales perspective, take people on that journey. Mm. So it crosses over the full revenue cycle. And I think that's a big differentiator too, is that SMS is this amazing messaging capability, but having that conversation throughout a customer life cycle changes the game. I think um, getting back to how do you humanize it, you know, how do you take this novel piece of technology that was built over, you know, over 20 years ago and how do you weave that into, you know, current technology, which is all fancy and whatnot. And you know, organizations spend, you know, millions upon millions of dollars on, you know, the fancy new app and the fancy new, you know, this or that. And uh, they might only get like, you know, 1% return on investment and, you know, questions get asked, you know, budget time, you know, how did, how did you guys go with that? We spent, you know, a million bucks on this particular kit and whatnot. And it's like, oh, well, we got, you know, and, you know, I think the technology is available, but, you know, this novel piece of technology called SMS is very, very effective. Mm. So, yeah. And certainly not to be discounted. No, at all. not at all. So, look, Dean, thank you so much. And thank you to everybody. Um, we're, we're pretty much out of time. Um, we hope you learned some really valuable tips for planning, setting up, executing a, pot a potential strategy using this medium. Pendula is an amazing tool. We're, um, we've been partnered for a, a couple of years now when we're certainly really excited about mm. what you're doing here in the market and the kind of customers that we're working together on. So thank you for sharing your research and experience. And Yeah, and thanks, Sarah. Um, I promised value. So if I'm going to give you guys back a handful of minutes, so there's a bit of value if I haven't delivered on the content. Um, but yeah, we'd love to be in touch. And again, that offer that we've got, um, there will be some information going out very shortly. And uh, it, coincidentally, for those that actually provided an SMS, um, you know, we did send an SMS out. And mm -hmm. we know there are some cheeky people out there that, you know, didn't put those numbers in that. We appreciate that. We understand. We've got to eat our own dog food. We've got to eat our own dog food. So, um, again, thanks, Sarah, for, for co-hosting. And, and we've really enjoyed this. And, um, yeah, please be in touch and um, have a wonderful day. Have an awesome day.